This is the plaintiff, Thomas Plantone. He says he's a broker that sells businesses, and he represented the defendant on the purchase of a business called Carpe Diem Pizza. The defendant is trying to wiggle out of the $5,000 commission he owes him. It's the bargain of the century, and he's here suing him for every penny of the money he says he's due. This is the defendant, David Gambroni. He says the plaintiff represented the owner of Carpe Diem Pizza, and he was interested in purchasing the place, but couldn't come to an agreement with the sellers and ultimately passed on the purchase. The place sold to another buyer. He has no responsibility to pay the plaintiff a thing and thinks the judge will agree. He's accused of not paying any dough. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says he brokered a deal for the defendant to buy a pizza place called Carpe Diem Pizza, uh, and the guy is trying to weasel out of the commission. The defendant is saying, hey, I'm not paying because I didn't buy it. It's the case of cough up the dough, dude. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Plantone, you are suing Mr. Giambroni and the Pizza Mafia Grill for five grand that you say he owes you in consulting fees. Tell me how that came about. So I've been doing this since 1978, and I did take uh, business law at Syracuse University, and I learned the importance of contracts and having them in plain language. So I always asked the client, make sure you read this agreement before you sign it, do you understand? And he said, yes. And then I said, do you see where you're paying me a $5,000 finder's fee for doing this transaction? He said, yes, and he signed it. But basically- it Can you hold on a second? Services. Hold on a second. Yes, I can. Is this the document you're referring to? Yes, it is, Your Honor. It is. This is a contract between you and Mr. Giambroni about him paying you $5,000 for doing what? Finder's fee. I got him a lease. I got him a list of the equipment. I put him in touch with the landlord. I loaned him $2,200 okay. for the security deposit, which is a separate issue. Okay, so hold on. I'm looking at this document, and this is a letter of intent. Are you a realtor? No, I'm a business broker. I okay. was a realtor, but... I okay. Not renew it. This in this document, this is a letter that is sent, a form letter that was is sent from Ben and Jambroni. Who's Ben? Uh, it's a personal friend that I met. Um, I met Mr. Jambroni through uh, my friend. Okay, so this is a letter of intent from your friend and Jambroni to buy the place, right? Co correct. All right, where here do you have a contract with Jambroni to pay you 5000 That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's right there, uh, paragraph number two, Your Honor. Earnest money deposit, $5,000 to be deposited with authorized escrow agent upon acceptance. Earnest money to be deposited in an interest-bearing account with interest to benefit the buyer. What are you talking about? Where's the contract for consulting fees to you for $5,000? That's what I'm looking for. So we, we did it through the letter of intent which says that but they the are going to pay. The only place I see it. the word consulting is in handwriting co and consulting fee. I don't see who's paying it. I don't see the amount. Do you see that anywhere? Because if you took that business course at Syracuse, I would think that you would understand the importance of having contracts be in plain English and, and say all the other things you said at the beginning of this trial. Where does it say how much you're to be paid? That 5000 goes to the escrow for a purchase of land, not to you. So where here does it say you get 5000 Okay. So Am I your missing Honor, something? Yes, Your Honor. Politely, he was not buying the land. This is in a, a strip plaza. So it's, I help him get a lease and I got him the keys to the place. Okay. And I'm going to read happened? the plain language of this document. We are pleased to present for consideration the following terms and conditions for the purchase of the above address property. Okay. So you keep talking about a lease, which I know comes later. But I know this has nothing to do with it because who am I going to believe? You are my lion eyes. I see that this is a letter of intent for the, I mean, you're, you know, do you ever watch a people's court? Do you think I'm an idiot? This is a document back when your friend and Jambroni were going to buy the place together. Did they end up buying the place together, by the way? Yes, they bought all the equipment. There's an exhibit that, did in there. They buy the land, did they buy the business? Yes. You said yes to that. 
Yes. I am going to try then to ask you what you are telling me here. However, the owner decided to go with another buyer. What did you mean by that? Oh, me? Or yeah, you. Yeah, he, that person left in the middle of the night. All right, and so then that's did where... that deal come to fruition? The answer is no. It yes, got it sold it... to someone else. No, but then in the meantime, I made the uh, op the uh, contract with the landlord. That's how... To that's do how what? To take over the premises and buy all the equipment. He, David owns all the equipment now. $100,000 worth of equipment for $5,000. It's theft of services. What he did is criminal. Can you please show me the contract between you and David? This is it, the letter of intent. Okay, show me where it says he owes you 5000 because I already it's read the only place the word 5000 appears says that's the earnest money that's going to be placed uh, in escrow for a sale of this property. That is this, what this document says. The property address. The Seven, Mr. Okay, Mr. Giambrone, what's going on? Tell me what's going on. I think you, you are getting the gist of what's going on. Uh, I had met with Tom and Ben uh, in January of last year. The business was for sale. We, I had asked for information on... What were you buying? Um, were you uh, buying the property? Were you buying the business? What were you buying? Originally, I looked at buying the business. I had asked for information in regards to the business. I was given information that was uh, non-truthful. By whom? Okay. Uh, the general, the Tom and... I don't understand. Who did the plaintiff represent, according to you? The seller of the business. He was representing the seller? Yep. He wasn't representing you and his good friend? No, but I didn't buy anything. I turned it down. In January of last year, I turned the business down. And then what happened? That gentleman sold to someone else. Right. Okay. And in September, or in August, that gentleman just abandoned the property. All right. And then I drove by, seen the signs. There's all kinds of signs for lease. I called the landlord. I had met okay, him. Okay, now you find the landlord, who's the person who owns yeah, the am. actual physical property, and what happens? I, I spoke with him about renting the space. And what about the equipment? The landlord owns the equipment. I do not. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. And then, so you are renting... The place now. From, yes. From and the was Mr. There. Plantone part of any any part of the rental agreement? No. Did Ben go into that business with you, or you did this alone when you decided to rent? He quit. Okay. How did he quit? Well, first he had he claimed he had COVID and just stopped showing up. Is this after you rented it? Uh, I rented it myself. Did was this after you rented it that he quit? Like, was he working for you or something? What do you mean? No, he wasn't working. He didn't even show up so, to work. Okay, but what's he, I, where did I, he I, fail to show up? To what? Well, we had an agreement to meet and discuss everything, and he just he claimed that he the Buffalo Bills were more important. They are than running a business. Well, well no, the are. Buffalo Bills are very, very important. I'm sorry, but that was his. That's. And okay. That was it. So was Ben mad at I'm you because you opened that business without him or not really? Yes. He was mad at you. He changed the locks on him or something? You tell me about that. That's correct. But I was not able to go to work because the locks were changed. Okay. But if, uh -huh. if, if is Ben's name on the lease? Yes. No. Can I see no. the lease? Can I see the lease you say his name is on? Can I see that, Mr. Planton? No. That one is not here. But it's not pertinent to this case. Though, I'll, I'll decide whether it's pertinent or not. Now, you are trying to get me to order this man to pay you $5,000 for services rendered. I have yet to see a contract between you and him where he agreed to pay you $5,000. By the way, did you ever agree to pay him $5,000, Mr. Jembrone? No. What were you supposed to be paying him? Anything? I wasn't supposed to pay him anything. Um, so where's your contract that says you get a finder's fee of $5,000? If uh, he purchases the business, Mr. Plantone, where is that? Yeah, so Mr. Jambroni never where would is have that, got this. Where is that, is my question. Not for me. Where is it's that? The, where is the contract the letter of, between you the letter and of him? The letter of intent is something between buyers and the seller. The only thing on the letter of intent is someone has written in there, in handwriting, and consulting fee. 
Where there does it say what the consulting fee is? $5,000. Where does it say what the it. consulting fee is? Read it out loud. $5,000 to be deposited with authorized escrow agent upon acceptance. That's earnest defined money. as earnest money deposit. What is earnest money deposit, Mr. Realtor? That's the money that we hold as our commission. No, it's to make not. The no, contract it's not. Binding. No, it's not. Okay? But aside from all that, it doesn't matter because he didn't purchase the business. So how is it that you believe you have a right to $5,000 when he didn't purchase the business? Then your answer to that is, oh, well, he owes me $5,000, not for the purchase of the business, but because I facilitated his lease. Well, where's the contract for you're going to pay me $5,000 for facilitating a lease? Where's that one? Your Honor, he was never buying the business. It was then the why consulting does the, fee. Why does the document that you have filled out say, we are pleased to present for consideration the following terms and conditions for the purchase of the above address property. Why does it say that? This is just a form. And well, it's then I not... suggest that maybe in your business law class, you would have realized that this is just a form. I'm going to enforce what's in there, and I am not going to enforce what's not in there. And then you have, Mr. Giambroni, an affidavit from the landlord saying he is the landlord. He never entered into a contractual relationship with business broker Thomas Plantone. He is a realtor. He entered into the lease agreement with David Giambron. There was no existing business or tenant occupying the premises. Simply put, David Giambron and I entered into a landlord-tenant relationship on our own without the assistance of any business broker. David Giambron commenced his piece of business from origination. He did not absorb an existing business. Okay, how much clearer does it get than that? My verdict in this case is for the defendant. Thank you. Mr. Plantone, uh, anybody watching this case would uh, immediately think you should have had a lawyer throw these documents up. Would you agree to that, even though you've taken a law course? No, we use these documents on a daily basis, and this was, I provided a valuable service, and Theft of service is a crime, so I'm going to pursue it. You know, I got news for you, Mr. Plantone. You just went to court. This case has just been heard by a judge, and you lost. It's over. You understand No, that? There's, there's other repercussions. Well, unfortunately, this court has found that you failed to convince the judge, and uh, you lose. Sorry. Mr. Gambroni, let me ask you how you feel about this. Is, do you think there's going to be more? He's, he's going to file more legal lawsuits against you? What do you think? Well, I probably believe that he's going to be looking for more free lunches. Uh, it's basically what he's about. And uh, all you got to do is check his past. All right. Well, listen, good luck. Uh, congratulations. You uh, have prevailed, and I hope your business does well. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Doug, here's the thing about this. Um, the plaintiff is trying to apply the sale contract to what he thinks should be a lease contract. You can't do that. The contract is the contract. You can't extend it beyond what the four corners of the contract says just because the deal changed. If the deal changed, you simply got to make a new contract. I'm curious if you ever get distracted by people's choices of backgrounds for appearing in court. <laughs> it's an interesting aspect of remote court that um, Not at all like real court. No, and uh, there's nothing more disappointing to me than when I see someone just against the wall. I know. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get nothing today. Like, right. <laughs> I know, there's nothing there, but you, sometimes it's like looking into a fishbowl. There's yeah. all kinds it's of just know, stuff going on. Stuff going, them. people walking half-dressed right. behind them. Uh -huh. uh, I remember a case where you had somebody who was in their house, and they were claiming that some piece of furniture was damaged or something, and, and you said, well, where is it? She said, oh, it's down the hall. She said, well, take me there. Kind of <laughs> yeah. held, the, held the cell phone out, walked down walked the hall, down the went hall to the showed furniture. me the damaged furniture. Showing, That's pretty awesome. Right. That's, right. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. But I guess yeah. every now and then you feel kind of like uh, a voyeur. I, and I, I, in on people. I am very much a voyeur. Right. You know, litigant beware. I'm looking. I'm and looking. looking for clues. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to whether the Snooping suit is right or not. things that are none of my business. Just yeah. looking around to see what's back there. So and who isn't, you know? Of course.